Amen. Amen. If you got your Bibles, I want you to stand with me. I'm not going to be before you too long this morning. I want to thank Bishop Tucker for this opportunity to be able to stand here and that he would trust me. You know, it's never intimidating when the bishop of the house is watching you preach, right? <laughs> but I give honor to our spiritual father. Can we thank God for our bishop this morning? And let me just say, y'all, listen, I, I have known him for over half my life, which is insane. But let me tell you, the anointing that he operated in in Africa this week was something that, that we have never seen before here. Amen. And it was a powerful anointing. He took the mic and the power of God hit that place. And I'll tell you, he operates in an anointing here. But our pastor, can I just say this? Our pastor, our bishop is more than a local preacher. And that just sums up the whole thing. But even beyond that, he is more than a national man of God. He has an international apostolic anointing that I witnessed that when we literally walked onto the ground, he did not even have to say anything. And I watched people that were demon possessed get unpossessed because he walked by. That doesn't, listen, that doesn't come with just a little preacher's anointing from a local church. That is an apostolic mandate and anointing on our bishop's life. And I don't know about you, but I want to take 10 seconds and give God praise that we have a man of God in this house who is not ordinary, but is everything but ordinary. Amen. And we give honor to Pastor Rachel. We watched last week and oh my God. Jesus, the Holy Ghost was in this place. Can we thank God for our pastors this morning? Bless his name. If you've got your Bibles, I want you to open up to Acts, the third chapter, 19th verse. If you'll give me just a little more monitors, this wonderful North Carolina weather is something crazy coming back from 35 hours of travel. Amen. The Bible says this. Thank you, Kelsey. I'm going to read it from the King James, and then I want to read the Amplified. It says this, repent ye, somebody say repent, repent, ye therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out. How many are thankful for the washing power of God that blotted out your sins? Do I have anybody in the building? That's been blood washed this morning. That's washed in the crimson flow that makes us white as snow. Hallelujah. It says, when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. Let me read that in the amplified version that says this. So repent. Change your inner self. Your old, somebody say old. Old way of thinking. Regret past sins and return to God we all know what repent means it doesn't mean just to cry in the altar and say God I'm so sorry sorry does it again but repentance will cause you to go from one direction to turn and do a 180 and go the opposite direction I'm talking about true repentance I'm talking about you desired something and you were going that way and you repented and all of a sudden, as Paul said, the things that I used to love, I don't love anymore. The things that I used to hate, I don't hate anymore because I've been transformed by repentance. It says this, so that your sins may be wiped away, blotted out, completely erased. Somebody ought to thank God right there. Here's where I want to base my subject on today so that times of refreshing times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord I love this part that's why I this the whole reason I did the amplified restoring you like a cool wind on a hot day I don't know who I'm here to speak to this morning but I'm speaking to somebody who's in a hot day I'm speaking here at Destiny Church International to somebody in the room that feels dry, that feels barren, 
people are getting blessed and touched and receiving the presence of the Lord around you, but you're here and you're saying, I just need a break. I just need refreshing. I just need to feel that cool wind on this hot day that I'm experiencing. And I came to submit to you this morning that the presence of the Lord is in this building and it is about to rain. Look at your neighbor and say, it's time for the rain. Come on, shout it louder than you did the first time. It's time for the rain. You can be seated. In the presence of the Lord, <laughs> with God being my help this morning, I want to talk to you that we, about the power of us needing the rain. We need the rain. And I want to tell you this morning, I'm not talking about the natural rain. Because maybe you rode in a different car this morning, but I think we came to church through the same weather that was a little wet out. I mean, I passed a couple rubber duckies on the way and, and, you know, seen a few umbrellas out and ready to go. But here we are in the natural. It is raining hard. But I want to submit to you today, it's going to rain in the spirit even greater than it's rained in the natural today. I'm talking this morning about a spiritual rain. I'm talking this morning about a rain that comes from heaven, a rain that comes from God. And I want to preach this morning about that heavenly rain that will literally transform our lives. I want to talk about the kind of rain that will refresh those who are weak and will give strength to those who feel heavy laid in this morning. I came to talk about a rain that will revive you, a rain that will restore you to a place in God where you are thriving in victory. I'm talking about the rain from heaven. Does anybody want the rain this morning? Does anybody want to experience the refreshing from the presence of God? So maybe you are here today and you feel like your life is in a drought. Maybe you feel that you are dry and you're empty. And maybe today you feel alone, you feel abandoned. I don't know who I'm talking to this morning, but I came to bring good gospel news to you to let you know that God is pouring out his refreshing rain for our souls, that it is time to get in position to receive the rain of God. Spiritual rain, I want to declare this morning, is coming to Destiny Church International. Let me take it a step further. I came to declare that the rain of the Holy Ghost is not only coming to this house, but it's coming to your house. It's coming to your family. It's coming to your marriage. It's coming to your home. If you believe it, why don't you give them a shout of praise? And so just for the next few moments, I want to take my time and just discuss how rain is important. And there are three things that rain does that we benefit from. And I want us to think with our spiritual minds this morning because rain is important. Number one, everybody say number one. Rain brings life. Somebody say life. Life. Why don't you just push the person next to you, make sure they got some life in them. If they don't, we'll pray for them. But the rain that I'm speaking about this morning will bring life to you. Where there is no rain, there is no life. Where there is no rain, there is no life. Can I take it a step further? Where there's a little bit of rain, there's a little bit of life. Where there's an abundance of rain, there's an abundance of life. I want you to hear me this morning. If I got to speak to your spirit, I'll speak to your spirit. But rain is coming to your house. I said rain is coming to your house. And not only is just any kind of rain coming, but the Bible teaches us about a story in the book of, of, of 1 Kings about the prophet Elijah when he was in a physical drought. And he's seen no rain in sight. And what did he say? He said, I hear the sound we haven't had rain in so long prophet but i hear the sound but don't you know how dry it is it's so dry that even the dirt has cracked but i hear the sound and what i love about it is he didn't just say i hear rain coming he said i hear the sound of an abundance of rain 
Does anybody need an abundance of rain in your house, in your marriage, in your finances, in your children, in your health? I believe God's going to rain on our pastor this morning so that by the time this service is over, something that was crooked is going to have to be made straight in the name of Jesus. Come on. We need the rain this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> There's a famous valley in the continent of Antarctica. Antarctic, good Lord Jesus, Antarctica. <laughs> Pastor said jet lag. It's a real thing, y'all. I'm, I'm just saying. He said, there is, I'm talking about a famous valley that is in Antarctica. And this famous valley, it has never seen rain. Never seen rain. Modern machinery has tested the land. They used, as a matter of fact, the same equipment that they would use on the planet Mars where they have proven that there's no life. And they said that this modern machinery only proved that in this valley in Antarctica that there is no sign of life that's ever existed there. And so because of this, no people, no animals, no plants, no food, no vegetation, nothing of life is able to exist there. Because why? There is no rain. Rain is important. Rain brings life. And I wonder this morning if your spiritual life resembles that famous valley. You produce godly fruit and you can't have godly success in your life and in the areas that you're wanting to thrive because you're in a drought. Maybe this morning your prayer life is dry. Am I speaking to anybody? Maybe when you worship, you feel so empty inside. You lift your hands. You repeat the words on the screen. You, you, you do all the things. You do all the mechanics of ministry, but you just still feel so dry going through the motions. You, you're faithful, and I applaud you for that. But you're faithful, and you're still dry. You're faithful and you're still empty. It's time that somebody gets full this morning. Maybe you feel like you're not growing. You're stuck in a barren season. But today, I said, but today, somebody be my witness. I said, but today, God is going to refresh you again with his rain. Hallelujah. Number two, the second thing that rain does is it cleanses. Somebody say it cleanses. It cleanses. When it rains in the natural, it cleanses the earth. When it rains in the spirit realm, it cleanses our souls. It cleanses our spirits. It cleanses our minds. We need the spirit of God to rain on us. Has your soul this morning got muddy? Has it got dirty? Have the cares of this life polluted your focus on God? Your prayer life's not as clear. Your fire has, has seemed to quench. You don't know what's going on. You just feel dry. Wondering what your issue is. Wondering what your problems are that are causing you to feel this way. Have you ha Maybe you have s hidden sins and weaknesses in your life that have caused you to get off track and to stray from your destiny and God. And if I'm talking to you, I've got to let you know today you need a cleansing. I said you need a cleansing for your soul. You need a cleansing to wash you, to regenerate you, to revive you, to renew you, to refresh you, to refill you, to replenish you this morning. Hallelujah. The Bible says in Psalm 51 and verse 7, David says this. We all know the scripture. He says to God, cleanse me with hyssop and I will be clean. Wash me and I will be whiter than snow. We were on the airplane leaving London Heathrow Airport. It was a little cloudy there. We got some, you know, distance into the flight. I was watching, you know, y'all can call me a nerd if you want, but I love it. I was watching the map on the TV of where we were going, and I realized that we were well above Canada. And so I looked out my window, interrupted the people around me sleeping, you know, and I looked out my window, and I was in awe. Because I didn't see the brown and green squares anymore. All I seen was white. Yeah. And I thought for a second, what was this clouds? And then I realized it's been snowing. How beautiful was the snow that rested on that land? In other words, I didn't see the dirtiness. I didn't see the dirt. 
I didn't see the landscaping. I didn't see the fields. I didn't see the things that we have, you know, designed. I didn't see, I didn't see any of that. I didn't even see the man-made roads. All I seen was beautiful acres and miles and miles of pure white snow. And I begin to think right there about how this scripture says that though we are dirty, when God washes us, he makes us whiter than snow. I'm talking about wider than snow. And I don't know about some of y'all. Listen, I was raised in church. I know church stuff, but there was some areas of my life that they were dirty. They were nasty. They were messy. They were muddy. And I didn't want people to know about them. But today I stand here and I'm white as snow. I'm covered in the crimson flow. And God has washed me and cleansed me and covered me. Covered my weaknesses, covered my mistakes, covered my flaws, covered my impurities, covered my inconsistencies, and made me whiter than snow. You know, we don't get snow a lot here in the south, but when we do, we go all crazy. <laughs> we go crazy, right? We make snow cream and snow angels. Some of y'all might even make some snow devils, and we'll pray for you. <laughs> But listen, there's nothing more beautiful than when it has become so dirty and the earth looks nasty and it snows and you see this beautiful picture. Some of y'all's old cars that have set their rot and you told your wife you was going to fix up that are rusted up. Guess what? You don't see that old rusted truck. You see white, beautiful, perfect snow. I'm speaking to somebody's spirit this morning. You might feel a little rusty, you might feel a little dirty, but the rain, the condensation, the snow that I'm talking about that's falling from heaven, rain of the Holy Ghost, rain of the Spirit of God is about to rain and fall on you like fresh snow, purifying and cleansing the dirtiness in your life. Somebody say it's time for the rain. If you're dirty today, if you'll let him, God will cleanse you. He'll clean you. He'll make you whiter than snow. The third thing rain does is it nourishes. Somebody say it nourishes. It nourishes. It nourishes the earth. We were in the beautiful town of Kissy, Kenya. And, and as far as you could see, when we would go in the villages, when we would go in the markets, and these men of God are my witness, you would see more vegetables and fruits than you've ever seen in your life. Because, and I'm not going to get too deep in it because lack of time, but they do a lot of trading there. They don't, most people don't make money like we do. They just grow crops and they go to trade it at the market. And one thing that I noticed about all of what I've seen is how much fruit, vegetables, corn, I mean, I ain't never seen so much corn. I told Chris Long, I said, all they need is some white lily corn mix and some buttermilk and Crisco, and we'd show them how to make cornbread. <laughs> I'll get off that, bless the Lord. <laughs> but the reality is, is all around is you could see nothing but vegetables and fruits and cabbage and all this stuff. And as I was preaching there, I thought, and I preached on the rain. God also called me to preach there about the rain. And one thing that I said to them, I said, if it stopped raining, this would affect their whole livelihood. If it stopped raining, there would be no vegetation. Their, their livelihood, their, their, not just how they eat, but how they trade, how they make their money, the little that they do, whatever they do, if it stopped raining... They would be in a for real serious drought. And, and here's what I began to think on. If it stopped raining there, then people would begin to starve. And if people began to starve, then people began to die. Hear me in the spirit today. I want to ask you the question. How many people around you, man and woman of God, are spiritually hungry because a lack of rain in your life has caused spiritual starvation in theirs. I challenge us all this morning because rain is important to survive. 
without it, it leads to starvation, and starvation leads to spiritual death. I'm all for programs. I'm all for systems. If you know me, you, lo- you know that I love administration. I am anointed for it, and I say that to boast only in the Lord. But listen, it doesn't matter the programs, the systems, the things that we have. If we can get by with it and not have the rain of the Holy Ghost that will come pouring on us and change us, then we're not having a move of God. We might as well join the YMCA or a nice country club somewhere because that's not the Holy Ghost. No, he can rain on our programs. And he can, re- and that's the difference. He can rain on our systems, and he can rain on that. But the key is letting him rain on it. On. Somebody say enough with shutting up the heavens. Rain on me. Why don't somebody just take a moment and cry out and say, God, I render the heavens. God, open up the heavens. I don't want them shut up anymore. Lord, if I've shut them up myself, forgive me and open up the heavens again in my life. Come on, open up the heavens again in my family. Open up the heavens again in my marriage. Maybe you're here and you got issues in your marriage and you're wondering what's going to happen on the brink of divorce. I've come to tell you counseling is beautiful. I come to tell you that all those things, therapy is wonderful. But what you really need is an encounter in the rain of the Holy Ghost that comes from heaven. You need the spirit of God, revival power to flow down like a mighty rushing rain. Healing in your body, miracles in your finances. Again, we can go search, we can use all the programs in the book and it's beautiful. But nothing, nothing substitutes the Holy Ghost. I said nothing substitutes the reign of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This week I watched people, for God's sake, that didn't have a business degree, that didn't have a job, that didn't have the titles that we have, and I watched people be more full of God than I've seen half of Americans. You know why? Because they may not have the programs. They may not have the facilities. They may not have the plans. But they've got the Holy Ghost. They've got the reign of heaven. And they know how to get in their prayer closet. They know how to get in a cornfield somewhere and start singing, Oh, Lord, I love you. Oh, Lord, I thank you. I learn in their language, Asante Yesu means thank you, Jesus. So guess what? All this past week, I be, guess what I've been saying? Asante Yesu. So I'm joining with my brothers and sisters there who know that the reign of heaven is real. And every time I say, Asante Yesu, I'm saying, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for the rain. Thank you, Jesus, for refreshing. Now, again, don't get me wrong. Because here's the thing. The rain from heaven will cause you to grow in those systems. But you must have the rain first. Rain that comes from heaven. Rain that cleanses us, washes us. It gives us life and rain that nourishes us, that keeps us growing, keeps us moving. The Bible is clear about a one-time encounter is not enough. That's why the Bible says, daily will I seek thee. I, I know salvation, God did some things that were one and done in us. But this walk with the Lord... Here's the thing. We're not glorified yet. We need the rain still. And if we get out from the rain, then we don't have access to it. Here's the thing, and I don't want to get too far ahead, but let me say this. If we go outside when it's raining and we put an umbrella over our head and we get under the shelter and we go hide from the rain, we can't complain about not experiencing the rain. If you got a little tomato garden at home, And you go put it under your awning or put it in your garage and then come in to your spouse and cry and say, 
my tomatoes aren't growing. They're sitting in the garage and nothing's happening. Why? Because you hid them from the rain. Some of y'all were hiding from the rain. Because you know the rain's going to make you wet. It's going gonna, it's gonna to make you uncomfortable sometimes. But guess what? It'll make you grow too. It'll cause you to go from death to life. It'll cause you to go from sickness to healing. It'll cause you to go from poverty to blessing. It will cause you to go from depression to victory. I'm talking about the reign of the Holy Ghost this morning. If you want the rain, lift your voice and say, send the rain. Send the rain. To some of you this morning, maybe you're hiding from the rain. Well, I don't want to speak in tongues. I don't want to do that. I don't want to flop on the floor. I don't want to encounter God that way. Let me be sophisticated. Okay? While you're sophisticated, you're still dry. While you're sophisticated, you're still dirty and nasty. Give me somebody that doesn't mind counting the cost, that doesn't mind looking messy and nasty the bible tells us the story of david when he gave god a praise and the reign of heaven was on the psalmist david and he acted a fool and danced until his clothes came off and his wife said why are you doing that you're embarrassing me and he said guess what i will be even more undignified than this I want to know this morning who's ready to dance in the rain, who's ready to soak in the rain, who's ready to saturate in the rain, who's ready to allow the things that have been dead and lying dormant in our lives for the Holy Ghost to rain on us and water us and grow us into this next season and into this next year. Come on, if you want the rain, give them a shout this morning. <laughs> the Bible says in Zechariah, Ask for the rain in the time of the latter rain, and I will give the rain. We need the rain. Spiritual rain. Why don't we just lift our hands a moment and ask him for the rain? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Come on, ask for the rain this morning. I'm talking about rain. We need the rain of revival. I said we need the rain of revival this morning. We need the rain of repentance this morning. We need the rain of healing and restoration this morning. We need the rain of deliverance and breakthrough this morning. I've come to tell somebody if you ask for the rain God will send the rain. If your life is dry, if your health is dry, if your marriage is dry, if your finances are dry. Come on somebody maybe you can bear witness if your finances are dry if your prayer life is dry if your worship is dry if your intimacy with God is dry ask for the rain I come to declare today that I see the rain I see the rain coming to your home I see the rain coming to your family I see the rain falling and it is an abundant rain how to prepare for the rain and I'm gonna close number one it's through repentance we open with the scripture you got to get rid of anything that would keep you from experiencing the rain from heaven. Come out of hiding. Just like I said in the natural, if you go hide from the rain, it ain't going to rain on you. In the spirit, if you get out from the covering, you ain't getting the rain. You're hiding in secret sin, hiding behind bitterness, hiding behind rejection. Oh, I hit a nerve, hiding behind unforgiveness. You better repent. Because times of refreshing are coming. 21 days left in the year. 2024 is right on the brink. 
And I don't know about you, but I don't want to go into the year dry. Pastor teaches us how you start something a lot of times is how you finish something. And I don't know about you, but I'm not going into this next year dry. I'm not going into this next year barren. I'm not going into this next year empty. I'm going in full. I'm going in refreshed. I'm going in revived. I'm going in stirred in my spirit because I'm positioning myself to get in the rain. Hiding behind anchor, hiding behind alcohol. You better get it out of your life and get in the rain and grow again. Number two, we got to seek him for the rain. We got to seek him for the rain. Ask for the rain and the rain will be given. Seek him for refreshing. It's found only in the presence of the Lord. You know what the formula for rain is? Getting in his presence. When you get in his presence, Bishop Tucker preached this last year, there is a 100% chance of rain. But I'm in a drought. Mm -mm. You get in his presence, he never runs dry. He is a well that never runs dry. But my marriage is empty. Oh, but if you get in his presence, I promise you he's going to rain on you. Do you know half the time we're complaining about things that we could have got an answer to if we would have just positioned ourselves in the right place and posture to receive what God has for us? He's wanting to rain on you. And it's time to get in position for the rain. Lastly, we have to expect the rain. Have to expect the rain. My dad's father was one of the greatest tomato gardeners in York, South Carolina. In the papers and everything. Had the best tomatoes. Incredible. But do you know one thing that he stood by? As some of you seasoned saints can bear witness. He used this thing called a farmer's almanac. And guess what? He'd abide by it. Because he knew if the book, oh, I'm going somewhere. If the book said it was going to rain on Good Friday of 2023, then guess what he was going to be doing on Good Friday of 2023? I got good news. I, oh, Jesus, I feel that. I opened the book, and there's a 100% chance of rain if we will position ourselves for the rain. Uh, I, I, what are you talking about? I'm talk Jesus. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I'm talking about where in that book that I opened up, it says, in the last days, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. I'm talking about that book that I opened that says the latter rain will be greater than the former rain. I've done read the almanac and it says it's going to rain. So it's time to prepare for the rain. It's time to get in position and expect the rain. If God says it's going to rain, if the man of God said it's going to rain, then I don't care who is a doubter and a busybody in your life. Shut them up and get in position for the rain. And let me just settle something while I'm at it. God is about to move in this place in an incredible way. And I know there's some little talk and some chatter that the enemy wants to stir some stuff up. And if you're not careful, you'll get distracted and you'll miss all God has for you and your family because you won't be, end up in a barren drought season. When the rain is pouring, you better get in position for the rain and tell everybody else to shut up. Somebody say it's raining. When we create an atmosphere, when we posture ourselves in a position to expect him for the rain from heaven, then guess what? It's going to rain, baby. It's going to rain. 